I didn't have to shave, but I wanted to shave. It was getting uh, very, very hot in St. Louis, and it was just becoming uncomfortable. So maybe someday the beard will make its return. Hey, Eric, I just lost a classical game in 15 moves, and I'm one out of five. How do I deal with that? Yeah, that's kind of part of chess. Like, If you play enough chess, inevitably you're going to have rough patches where you lose multiple games in a row, maybe you're blundering too much, maybe you're not focused. First of all, it's important not to get like too emotional. I mean, of course it can be painful in the moment, but eventually you want to be able to reflect on like what's going wrong in your games and what you need to improve on. If you lost in 15 moves, then maybe there's some issue with like opening knowledge or um, looking for the opponent's threats or tactical awareness. So usually once the tournament is over, you want to take some time to review your games and then try not to commit the same mistakes again. Hey, Eric, can you add discovered checkmate to the Rosen trophies? I actually, I don't uh, control the site. Uh, that's completely created by a uh, viewer subscriber, Trevlar. Yeah, he, he controls what what constitutes as a Rosen Trophy. I think he's done a pretty good job choosing things that are unique enough to be considered a, an achievement. Yeah, we do have the Rosen score command. If you want to check your Rosen score. I did buy the domain name though. That was my, my uh, one of my contributions, I guess, to the site. I did update my chess.com profile picture uh, like right before the stream. I just got a quick photo Put it up. Last week it was a bearded profile picture. Got some strong players playing today. Magnus on top. A lot of the regulars. And David Navarra. 25th seed. Have to scroll down a lot to oh, find no, my, my name. Beard. Oh yes, my non-beard. So last week I was actually... I was required to join the Fair Play Zoom call. Uh, to be monitored during Title Tuesday, but apparently I passed because I, I was not uh, asked to return. So no Zoom call today. I scored seven points out of eleven in both Title Tuesdays last week, and the plan is to play both today as well. So we'll see whether or not uh, my lack of facial hair helps me or hurts me. Is it common to have to be on the Zoom call? I think every week they, they choose like a handful of players. I'm not sure the exact process of choosing players. Like I think part of it is supposed to be random, but in the email like saying that I had to join the call, it, it said that it was because I scored very well in one of the title Tuesdays a few weeks ago. I scored eight points. But I'm not sure if it's based on just points or the like, quality of play. Because when I scored eight, like the quality of my games were uh, <laughs> was very bad. Yeah, I do have the heart rate monitor back, keeping the heart rate below seventy, trying to be calm. Very often on Title Tuesday, the heart rate will exceed, usually exceeds like one hundred thirty at least a few games. Okay, so during gameplay, chat will be in email only mode, alerts will be muted. I'll try and stay focused. There we go. Oh, it's that Chai Town dude. Appreciate the bits. Okay, we'll start with E4. Have an Alakine. I'm trying to play a solid setup. This is my go-to setup against Alakine. D4 is well defended, H3 comes, takes, takes, the pawn's defended quite well.
Let's turn the volume down a little bit. So one plan is bishop c3 and then prepare b4, b5. Doing well on time. And this is pretty much the extent of my opening prep. Like get the setup and then expand. Queen f6 coming. B5 looks possible. Also G4. Let's start with B5. Yeah, if we trade rooks, uh, the queen help still helps defend the pawn on D4. I was thinking if 97, I can play G4 and force knight back to H6. It looks good, but it probably still takes a lot of work. Thinking f5, g5, and f7, h4. Maybe queen f4 first, prevent f4. Queen trade is offered. I probably don't mind trading queens. <clears throat> There's bishop d2. e5. e5 is a little bit annoying, actually. At some point, I would like to maneuver the bishop to f4. But it could give black the, the chance to play e5 so i might like play rookie one bishop d3 knight f5 is an idea so let's start with this knight f5 i probably just take it and this pawn Debating between rookie one and bishop d2. Bishop d2, e5 takes. I think that's okay. There's some lines where like we trade a lot, but I'm gonna be hitting the rook in the end. Oh, I'm not, am I not winning a pawn? Huh. I forgot that was possible. If rook takes first. Hmm. Not easy, all of a sudden. Still probably pushing for a win somehow. Takes, takes. Up a pawn now. These pawns are weak. Hmm.
that Rook C5 is coming. Okay. Ah, took work. Took work. It was a good fight. I think I was in decent control. I made some oversight when I played bishop d2. I thought I was winning the pawn. And then for some reason, I didn't like acknowledge the fact that knight takes, hits this knight, and I, I can't take right away. Um, so maybe I should have just played rookie one. Engine says king g2. You can change the settings here. Yeah, bishop d2 is not the best move. Still better for white. A nice positional game overall. I think this is a nice example of like how the play can flow from the setup in the Alakine. I think usually people play knight d7 to threaten to take and there's a pin on the diagonal. Do you think it was a mistake for Bach to exchange bishops? Oh, towards the end, probably. Yeah, I was not expecting rook a2. Um, I was expecting rook e8. And then I wasn't actually sure what I was going to do here. Like rook e2 came to mind to prepare this. And if f3 here... Black has weird counterplay. Yeah, who knows what, what, what would have happened. Thank you, Joss for Pope. Happy 30 months. So that was the first round. One out of one. I'm tied with Magnus. I could play a very strong player next game. I think my rating is around like the, the cutoff. I'm going to have to check the chess mood recommendation against Alakine too. So I know they, they have some lines where white can play e6 earlier. But maybe not in this variation. Might have to do something with like bishop e4. Which uh, I'm less familiar with. Yeah, I'm sorry for all of those people who are upset that the beard is gone. It'll come back someday maybe. Okay, let's watch, uh... Oh, wow. Final game, Hikaru. Struggling. Wait. Is Hikaru gonna win this? No, White, White's still saving the bishop. But Hikaru's doing Hikaru things. <laughs> still trying to push for a win. 50 move rule, 151 oh no, moves. Stubble. Oh no, my Hikaru. Okay, next game starting almost now. Thank you to BBR Power. Playing Enjao. Here we go.
I looked at this actually in prep for the Madrid tournament. Memory is fuzzy though. I'm pretty sure I looked at the exact position after F5. Take. <clears throat> Take with pawn two. Now let's take with knight. Knight h5 would be unpleasant. Tricky move.
Let's go. Let's go. Something funny happened there. Okay, I couldn't explain it in the moment, but let's go back. Um, I've seen Hikaru make this mistake too, like at least once before. When my opponent played c4, he pre-moved bishop takes c4. The problem with this pre-move is when I on passant, the c4 square becomes vacant. And it's not bishop takes c4, it's just bishop c4. And then I just take the bishop. So it's um it's an easy like pre-move mistake to make. Um I, I I mean, I'm not going to take here. This would be, I think, just positional mistake for black. I was also probably just losing. Like, if if white just takes here, I wasn't sure what I was going to do. I think I was going to play this, but if I take, there's this move. And if I play this, there's this move. Takes, takes. This should be winning for white. So... I'm very fortunate there that, I mean, h6 does look attractive, but taking is probably just much cleaner. Yeah, white's completely winning. Okay, very fortunate in that game. I had a bit of opening prep. Um, I played into a line which you can get from a, a few different move orders. This line more commonly occurs from knight c3 on move 2, but we still transposed. And yeah, a5, I don't think I was confusing my prop. Yeah, the main moves here are a4 and c3. Um, the structure, it looks a little bit overextending for black, but and the point, as we saw later, is that, uh, yeah, the z-pawn is kind of backwards. And I'm pretty sure f4 is a mistake. Okay, engine says it's fine. I analyze this uh, maybe a week or two before the Madrid tournament. I didn't get any games in this in Madrid. There's like one or two opponents that could have maybe gone into this. So a good start to Title Tuesday. Two out of two. Back over 2,700. I don't need the beard to play like decent chess. Yeah, we didn't quite get a time on of there. I don't know what we call this. Chess.com calls this closed Sicilian traditional line. Okay, well let's uh let's get back into game mode. Emote only, here we go. Playing Labanov. Never played before. Black again. Thinking bishop f2, bishop h4. And there's queen e1. Takes, takes queen g5, maybe. Queen g5, g4, knight f6, f4. Play knight g3 here. I'll try it. <laughs> kind of risky. Uh, 
I probably just have to retreat and reposition. G6, I have knight or bishop G4. G6 here. Um, getting outplayed. Oh, this is really bad. Mm. Like Pac went to zero, I still had like a second to make a move. Uh hoping to put up more resistance there. Tough game. It was like the whole game I got outplayed. But hopefully some lessons to take away. Apparently this position is still like playable. It's just so much easier to play for whites. Yeah, my opponent uh, seems like pretty well prepared for this line. So he delayed queen c2, which I think is uh, probably a nice approach for white. The queen ends up being more useful on d2 to support this and this. But apparently this is fine. Maybe I should have considered g5. g5, bishop g3. Looks like it requires some concrete play from black. 
There was a question about bishop takes h4, probably after my opponent played pawn h4. I was too scared to take the pawn. I also, I did calculate this. Um, if I take, then there's g5, and I think my bishop gets trapped because the queen is cut off. And after takes, takes, yeah, the bishop's attacked and pawn's defended. Knight g6 walks into takes, and then, yeah, what to do? Oh, it's still playable. Queen d7. How does this work? Knight takes h4? It's not mate, because queen h2. Yeah, I didn't really calculate this far. I saw this position, and yeah, I didn't, didn't spot this move. It's still hard to go for, though. Yeah, I really got ground down. I really tried just to fend off things. B5 was probably just a bad move, even though Engine recommended it. <laughs> okay, moving on. I'll play E4. So playing down. Play knight c3. That's some kind of anti-Sicilian. Probably eventually play d4. Some idea to play b3, c4. This might allow for knight d6 too. Although, yeah, I have to watch out for knight c3. Also, I forgot the pawn was hanging. Is it takeable? Oops. And there's bishop d2. Yeah, that's a valuable pawn. Rook b1, maybe. Have to treat the blunder as a gambit. At least the diagonal's open. But that was such a nice pawn e5, I just plundered away. Okay, bishop e2, c4. I have some tempo moves. Calculating castle, bishop e2, queen f5. c4, knight f6. Uh, then maybe bishop takes f6. It's still definitely some uh, something to play for for white. And where else does knight go? B six or B four? Okay, so I can give black double pawns.
I'm thinking, uh, yeah, C5. Could throw in queen g4, but... And this bishop is now confined to sadness. Queen g4, king h8. F4 too. Okay, Queen E5, Bishop E4. There's H5. Wait, Bishop E4 just wins? This is like a common motif. Where like the only way to defend h7 is to play f5, but f1's pinned. Yeah, I think black should have tried queen e5 there. So the blunder gambit pays off. A blundering the e5 pawn leads to unstoppable attack. Yeah, I'm either mating or winning the queen. Okay. <sighs> I'll take it. Not super clean. I wonder how bad like losing the pawn was for me. Ninety four. Like I didn't even realize when I played ninety four the like initially that I'm losing the pawn. But apparently it's still like it's still fine. Like ninety four is very playable. And after B three, wow, it's still very playable. I was expecting queen f five. I was gonna play. I was gonna play c four. I was calculating knight f6 and bishop takes f6. Because if takes, I have the triple fork. Okay, so that kind of worked out. It maybe goes to show how like dangerous white's position is. How nice the setup is. Like You can afford to lose a center pawn and still have initiative. So that was round four. Uh, three out of four. I have one upset so far. Uh, gaining some rating back over 27. So I was basically in control this whole game. C5. It didn't feel like I was in control. But yeah, there was definitely compensation for the pawn. Yeah, queen e5 here. I wasn't sure what I was going to play. And the queen's tied down to f6. Because now if bishop e4, there's h5. Rather than f5 losing the rook. Oh, hello to Messi. Happy birthday to Messi. I play the Messi game in honor of Messi. I think there's games still going, actually. Oh, watching, um, yeah, very strong player from Turkey. Young player, too. Thank you, Leo Spaceman. Happy 26 months. When is Scrabble tournament? I actually, I played my first official over the board Scrabble tournament, uh, this past weekend. It was really fun. I can talk about it later. I did get an official Scrabble rating. Thank you, uh, Patrick VF. Yeah, White's playing for a win here. This could 
kind of take several moves. Inevitably, it's going to be Rook and Bishop versus Rook. Or I move 137. At some point, White's going to win the pawn, too. This game could pass 200 moves. But can White win the pawn? Don't flag. I feel like Rook H3 should have been played there. Is there a stalemate trick? Wait, White's winning, right? White's winning. Promote tonight. Ah, it's gonna be a draw, right? Or can White win the knight? It's almost Zugzwang, but not quite. Yeah, this is now easy draw. But it's I think it's gonna go the whole distance. So the promotion happened on move 151. So 50 move rule will take effect at move 201. Yeah, we don't need the engine here. Okay. 179 moves. Yeah, kudos to Black for, like, under-promoting. Because if you have auto-queen turned on, then you have to, like, know what key to press. It's, it's either, like, control or alt. Or option if you're on a Mac. Maybe command. Just press the whole keyboard at once. <laughs> I did that once, like, I, I tried pressing control, alt, and shift. I may have been on each ass and holding down shift like causes you to draw an arrow rather than make a move. And then it caused me to flag. It was kind of sad. There's a question. Does Scrabble have opening theory? There's way more legal, like first possible moves in Scrabble than chess. Like pretty much every Every Scrabble game is unique after like the first move or two. So there's probably more possible Scrabble games than chess games. And there's more possible chess games than like Atoms in the universe. So that means there's a lot of Scrabble games. How much memorization is Scrabble? Well, it's helpful to like know valid words. And there's there's over 100,000 valid words in Scrabble, so I think memorization is definitely a big part. But there's also a lot of strategy and probability and math. So there's some different aspects compared to chess. There's a question, is there a Scrabble engine? Yeah, there's a, there's a handful of Scrabble engines out there. There's one, um, I think the, the most like well-known one is Quackle. Kind of like the stockfish of Scrabble. Okay, playing Rudd Makarian. Let me uh let me refocus here. Here we go. Hey, thank you, Photo Chess. Appreciate the raid. Hope you had a good stream. If you're just joining, I'm three out of four on Title Tuesday. Opponent gave me some small time odds there. H three. We have another Carlsbad structure. I 
I could take... Bring the knight to d6. That's a 96 idea. <coughs> Never mind. Where is the knight going? Wow. I have to take. It's crazy. Pawns are scary, but of a knight. Calculating b3 takes takes rook a3 takes b4. I have d4, and d4, queen d5. Go for it. I might sack. I takes e5, like if b3. I have this move. I can't play c5 because takes. Probably threatening takes. I have six.
Let's go. Oh, that was so stressful. That was so stressful. What just happened? I had two queens, but I couldn't checkmate the king. What just happened? Wow. The king was so... It's just slipped into my territory. I was up a queen and a rook. But look at white's pawns. I... Uh, I didn't want to draw. I sacked a queen. Also, yeah, if takes, it's mate. Funny mate. King takes f8, queen d8, checkmate. Well, he had so many pawns. Only four pawns, but it felt like so many. I'm sure things were amiss. White was basically playing Tetris with his pawns. But the, the Tetris piece kept changing shape. It's like a Tetris nightmare. It changed from the T shape to whatever shape this is. Hey, it's Irene. You can play queen g5 and then queen d8. I mean, there had to be like some force made here. Made in six. Oh, I missed maiden two. I had queen h1. Oops. Yeah, either queen to h1. I just assumed it should be easy, but it uh, turned out not to be easy. Like already the force mate, queen g2 quiet move. I don't think I ever like relinquished the advantage though. Except I did. Queen takes e5. <laughs> Oh no, my queen. Wait, final position? Wow, the final position is drawn. Actually, I thought I was winning, but uh, I calculated uh, this, this, this. Takes, takes, takes. But apparently, white can take here. And I can't take either pawn. Wow. Wait, what if I play c4? Oh, it's a pawn race. So I have to, do I have to play c4 or a3. So f6 takes, white wins a rook back, and then we queen. White queens first, or no, I queen first, but. Uh, oh, it's funny. I can promote to bishop too, to skewer. Okay, king e8 is probably more accurate. What a crazy game. The pawn structure is so funny too. Like white's close to having quadruple pawns. I was up two knights here. Initially I was going to play... I was looking at this and then I realized there's rook g3. Um, I initially calculated this, 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 and if I take its mate. Um, thankfully, I didn't go into any of that. Yeah, these pawns were so menacing. Okay, four out of five. A very good start. Playing Stalin Monster, play e4. Yeah, I think this is like the highest rated Canada Master. Strong Blitz player. Queen d2 is natural. Not sure about g5. Let's go for it. In g5, I can maybe maneuver the knight to g3 and h5 eventually. 
I'm sacking a pawn. F5, wow. Probably have to take. Yeah, G4 might be coming. Hmm. Still going to leave B2 hanging. Objectively, it's probably not great for whites, but... Okay, now at least if G4, I can take and play Knight H4. Yeah, the e5 goes queen d4. Hmm. Uh, not pleasant. Time situation is not good either. Okay, Rook D, Queen B three. There's some hope to get like a opposite clock bishop ending. Especially if black takes. Rook f6, I think I take. Rook c8, probably rook d2.
know what to do. Gallo played there. Looked like at some moment, like I had some initiative, but yeah, it probably wasn't enough. Opponent played well to keep the pressure. Yeah, D4 maybe not necessary. Okay, what to do? Still good score overall, four out of six. Probably have to check this opening. F4 is fine. I mean, my opponent was clearly prepared. Wow, so engine's actually giving queen d2 and then some lines with castle and queenside. Which I don't think I've ever seen before in this uh in this opening. Like usually when you play Grand Prix you castle kingside. But maybe against this specific setup, if black wants to play g5, it's more justified. Thank you to Sedsmet. Oh, that's true. Yeah, it's if I win the rest of my games, I'll I'll beat my best score ever. Question: Would you recommend Taimanov or Dragon? I play Taimanov, but I noticed you play Dragon instead. I play both. I kind of I rotate between the two. Uh, recently, I've been playing probably a bit more Accelerated Dragon. I guess it's it's useful to know the difference between Dragon and Accelerated Dragon. Um, yeah, one reason why I've, I've been playing more Accelerated Dragon recently is because I've been watching a lot of the, the chess mood courses, Xlam chess mood, if you want access, um, they have like very extensive preparation in the Accelerated Dragon, especially for Blitz too. I think it's, uh, it's a bit easier to play compared to Tamanov, at least at the higher levels. Nope, okay. Not much more time to analyze. Here we go. Playing Shear Down, another candidate master. Another opening I prepped in Madrid, but didn't get a chance to play. A6 is not the main, li the main line. Um, I actually asked Fabi about this. Fabi said F6 or H6, but this is uh, just a kind of rare sideline that hopefully my opponent won't refute. Okay, so if d3, I play queen c7. If castling, I play h5. Is e5 just hanging now? I think it is. Yeah, I think queen g3 was necessary there. Have to watch out for ninety four. I could go for H five, rookie one. Hmm. Queen F five two is no Queen F five doesn't look great.
I'm just not sure about queen g3. Maybe d5. d5, f4. f4, maybe g4. Get back the pawn. Because if I take, I yeah, that file opens. Hmm. Not quite what I what I wanted, but oh wow. Yeah, this is really not what I wanted. I take. I do have queen d4. Queen d4, knight e3. Bishop d6. I'll try it. Opponent's playing hyper aggressively. This looks so shaky. If I take... To take... Bishop d6. That might be okay. I burned most of my time, but... If I'm winning material, that would be nice. Am I winning more material? H6. Rook H5, G6. And the bishop uh, controls F4 and C7, so there's no good knight checks. Yeah, there's C4, King C6, Bishop F4, but I have Rook D8. Okay. All right, survive that game. Do. Oh! What happened to my face? Uh oh. Let me um troubleshoot my camera. Okay. <laughs> Sorry about that. How long was the camera frozen for? Was it frozen the whole game? It's like I wasn't looking at chat. I guess that's why people were using the frozen Rosen emote. The whole game. Five minutes. Okay. Deep apologies. What to do? Has it been frozen the whole stream and I just didn't know this? It goes to show how much I'm focusing on the chess rather than OBS and chat and everything. So, uh, that was round seven. Yeah, I got some uh, got some new opening prep. The knight d4. This is a line that. This is a position that happened in the candidates. It was uh, Ferruja against Fabiano, and Ferruja played c4 against Fabiano, and eventually the game ended in a draw. But I had I had actually asked Fabiano like what he was gonna play if Ferruja played knight g5. And he said these are the two main moves. 
Uh, but recently I've been looking at this movie, A6. It's a weird line, like not something that you see every day with so many knights on the fifth rank by move seven. White's idea with knight g5 is to play this and destroy black. Maybe even this, but yeah, I think the main threat is queen f3. What happened in the game, um, yeah, we got to a position which I had analyzed in preparation for Madrid, and my opponent just didn't defend the pawn. I looked at this, and then I think just castling. And if white takes, there's takes, takes, and rook f5. But even when I won the pawn, like white had compensation. This is f4 move. Yeah, I think I was worse. I may have been close to losing, like around here. Okay, apparently queen e5 was a mistake. Yeah, if queen e3, I was gonna I think I was gonna play this. There's also a line like if takes I have queen d4. And black should be okay here. Anyway. Was this line part of the scrabble prep? Uh not really. <laughs> More part of the chess prep. Not sure what words I would have been prepping for this line. How many rounds did you play so far? So that was round seven. I'm five out of seven. There are four more rounds to go. We do have a break after round eight. Who's the Hans Niemann of the Scrabble world? I don't know. I don't know the Scrabble world that well to make any such comparison. Anyway, okay, let's refocus. Chess lover, Elmer Muradley, strong grandmaster. Another Alakine. Yeah, this line. I have some vague recollection of f4. Not sure though. Like there's some chess mood course. I'm pretty sure they, they say f4 is like a strong idea. Take completely miss this. I think I'm just losing a pawn. Rookie one. Seems so awkward for black, though. Hmm. 
Okay, we'll treat the blunder as a gambit. I'm sacking another pawn. This time it's an intentional sacrifice. Not sure if this is a threat. Probably not. There's some idea like rook d1, knight f6. Also queen a3 is one of the main ideas. Now these two pawns are hanging. Take and take, knight c2. And knight c2 is annoying. Not what I want to trade off the bishop, but b2 is still vulnerable. There's rook e8. Rook e8, queen d6 maybe. Bishop takes. Actually, rookie eight, bishop takes b7, hit f7. Good move. Uh, I couldn't drag the piece fast enough. Uh, still, like, playable, but I just got too long time there. Like, I saw my clock taking down, and I, I panicked a little bit. Uh, oh, yeah, I have C5 here, too. It's, yeah, probably it makes sense to try and trade off this pawn. Do I have anything earlier? I mean, after 96, I'm probably on the back foot. Okay, queen e1. Rook bd1. That's so hard to consider, just like leaving the knight to perish. 
What's what's the idea after takes? Oh, queen b2, queen takes b7. Wow. Yeah, that's so hard to find. Yeah, my opponent did a good job to consolidate. I mean, I should have played quicker to put more resistance. Anyway, uh, five out of eight leading into another break. Welcome back to G-Spates. Turn off the, uh, or I'll turn back on TTS. Imagine there's still games going on this round. Feels like it should be winning for white. The king in the corner. There you go. Okay. Yeah, these endings are not easy to defend. Oops. Okay, I do have the chess mood tab open. Um, I'm going to have to take a look, actually, at their Alakine recommendation. Courses. Control F. Alakine. I faced the Alakine twice today. The last game probably should have been more prepped. Leaked. Yeah, I'm leaking the entire Chess Move website completely for free. Uh, if you want access, again, friendly reminder. Link is in the chat. Um, I'm going to take a break. Wow, a wonder. That's a wonder leading. Leading the tournament. Red Nova. Who is this? Korobov? Korobov. New names on top. Eric Icy, who I played last week. Magnus still up there. Bobby on six and a half. Okay, I'll be back. Heart rate past 100. What happens when I get up and walk around? Got some, uh, some emergency vitamin C. Try and build up my immune system. Are there people here? It feels like chat is very slow, but uh, maybe it's the nature of Title Tuesday. If you're still watching the stream and awake, let me know where you're watching from. Some people lurking. Is chat concerned about my heart rate? Hey, got someone from Skokie. Oh, a lot of people here. Okay. Well, <laughs> let me put it back in emote only. Um, yeah, next round starting now. Playing Pavel Alexander Rue. Stick with Sicilian. Sound working? My earbud's not working. Okay, we have a Marazzi bind. Accelerated dragon. G4. Hmm. H5 is kind of interesting. We'll start with this. H4 is probably coming.
thinking takes in queen b6. And target b2. F5 is an idea. Expecting this or this. Actually now wondering about a3, b3. The taking doesn't quite work. f5 takes takes. It's risky. Also a3, b4. Hmm. I might have to go for f5. Realizing a bishop d4, I might have knight d3. That's scary, though. f4? Rook G7 is probably coming. If I get a chance, I'd love to move my bishop or play Rook F7, <coughs> Rook F7 but it might be too late. <clears throat> Maybe I just run with the king to e8. And white can win back material if they want. That's still interesting. I mean, white's king is, it looks safe, but there might be like future ideas of queen g1. The bishop moves away. Queen b4. Thinking rook f6. Take. Yeah, the counterplay begins.
Oh, tricky game. Tricky game. Uh, where's my emote only thing? Here we go. I lost a button. Okay. Feels like maybe half my games this title Tuesday are going into openings that I like recently prepared in Madrid. It's another line that I didn't prepare this so specifically. I looked more at King F2. It's a trendy idea. But some of the ideas were still fresh. Like this idea to taking Queen B6. Not sure how strong it was in this position though. So G4. Oh, the engine's saying, suggesting an interesting idea to take, take A3, B3, Bishop, B2, and then fight for the C file. And the bishop stands nicely, like Fien Kadod in White's territory. Okay, so I'm six out of nine. Um, I may have been in trouble. Yeah, especially here with rook g1. Looked like a very scary position. White was correct in sacking. Apparently bishop z4 also playable. But yeah, once the bishop came off the board, then I think momentum kind of shifted. It's white's king who got very unsafe. It's still hard to crack the position, though. Like, White just blundered in time pressure. So, next game should be starting soon. Oh, earlier people were saying where they're watching from. Got Charlotte, Netherlands, New Mexico, Colombia, Slovenia. Virginia, Czech, Manchester, Seoul, Indonesia, Saskatoon, which I don't think I've heard of before, Georgia, the country, Corvallis, Oregon, Chicago, Netherlands, Boston, Puerto Rico, Belgium, Netherlands, Finland, Hungary, France, South Africa, Baltimore, Austria, Germany. Nice diversity of, uh, of viewers. Okay, a uh, new opponent from Azerbaijan. Okay. A Grand Prix attack. I'm happy to see this line. Yeah, this is a fun one. I should be winning the D6 pawn. There's queen b6, though. Yeah, maybe moved a little bit too quickly there. Hmm. Rook f2. Well, 
We're doing about F5 in some some positions. I allowed rook d8, but rook d8, queen a3. Hmm. Trying to calculate queen b2, knight a4. Queen g7. And this is a reason for playing rook f2 to make sure c2 is defended. So I'm not getting like forked. Yeah, the queen has some, has like three safe squares on the diagonal. I'm thinking e5. You just clamp down. Rook d8, I just take and win material. The plan is knight c5, e4 to f6. I think I can still go over this. Rook d8, I take and still have 94 ideas. Really? Like b6, how do I win? b5. Take. <clears throat> Probably start with just taking. There's rook b8. Should be fine though. I thought knight g5 and then rook d7. I'm doing very well on time. If I take At this point, I'm really spoiled for choice. I think taking is cleanest. So I'm threatening mate, threatening the queen. Bishop's still hanging. Okay. It's cleanup time. Oh, the bishop's gonna run out of squares too, like bishop d5, c4. Okay. That was a really clean game. I mean, no issue on the clock. I will admit that when I won the d-pawn, I kind of forgot I was losing the b-pawn, but the position ends up being so nice with the uh, dark square weaknesses. So, 7 out of 10, one more game, one more game. If I win the last game, I'll, I'll again tie my best ever score with 8 points. But I'll definitely play up. I feel like I'm going to play Zhigalko. I don't even know if Zhigalko is like playing, but it seems like there's a lot of final rounds where I play Zhigalko. A lot of games still going. I don't think I'll play Fabiano, unfortunately. Seven and a half, still playing. I 
I do have to give credit to uh, Ch Chessmood again for that, uh, that opening line. It was Grand Prix with D4. Super venomous. Okay, Fabiano wins. So he's on 8.5 out of 10. Oh, Wonder is still playing. Let's watch a Wonder. Playing Ergaisi. Battle of the Young Prodigies. Looks looks almost winning for black, but maybe not quite. Maybe it's a draw. Can you I don't think you can afford to play King D4. Wait, can you get to A4 and play F6? Wait, this might be winning. Why not King A5? Oh, it's still a draw, though. I was thinking King A5. Yeah, White can play A3, even. This would be winning, though. Like, King A5 was maybe worth a try. I guess then there's this line, and yeah, this is actually kind of risky for black. Okay. So Wonder is still leaning. 9 out of 10. Magnus with, with 8.5. So I'm currently in the top 50 overall. Can watch Cinderoff. Crazy pawn structure. Oh, did the wonder beat Hikaru? Really? It's hard to follow the other like standings and games while playing this tournament. Black just dropped a rook. But it's probably just winning. Well, it was threatening mate. Okay, final game approaching. Oh, Hikaru had internet issues. Ouch. Couple games still going. Rook first rook. Okay. Nothing too crazy. All right, let's focus. So seven out of 10, final game starting now. Playing the chess child. Mm, what do I wanna play? Play this one. It's actually an annoying line. Probably have to do some work here. Bishop d3 has been more trendy recently. This I don't mind so much. I think queen b3 is the main move. I'm threatening to take and take. This is um, Mitch Delishvili against Fabiano from the World Cup last year. And Fabiano played some crazy like knight g8 to h6, I think. Okay, knight d3. Might still go for the maneuver. I'm actually curious about e5 here. e5, take, 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 take. I don't think that works though. Play 
H5. I just gotta play quicker. This not, might not be the right approach, but uh, I'm trying to be like Fabiano. Just get the knight to a happier place. F5 probably. Might be this idea. H4, knight, g3. Can I play h4 right now? Let's do it. And this is a threat. Bishop f2, maybe still knight g3. And there's takes, takes h3. I bring the other knight to f5. Let's do it. The pawn looks weak, but if I get knight f5 in, it might still be weak. It should be five, I guess. It might just be losing a pawn. Takes. I have rook g8 maybe to try and defend. Not the move I want to play. King e7 takes takes. Hmm. Ninety three fork. I mean, taking the bishop actually looks interesting. Takes takes check there. I think I just take here. That king should be on B8.
Oh no! Mm. I crumbled quickly. Uh, I got my fork. I well, got a lot of condensation though. I spent some time like trying to figure out if this works. Takes rook h8, king g1. So if I get the queen here before white can win the pawn, but I couldn't quite make it work. Ah, uh, definitely had chances there. Seven points. This is my third title Tuesday in a row, getting seven points. Um, I mean, nice play overall though. Hey, it's welcome back. Uh, welcome back to Shawarma. Happy twenty six months. Asking for Stafford Gambit. I didn't get tilted enough to play the Stafford. Thankfully. <laughs> Was playing some more uh, more reputable openings today. A lot of fun games. Um, quickly analyze here. Yeah, I don't remember having studied knight d three. Okay, knight e seven makes way more sense. Just get this knight to f5. I did it the long way. Got the other knight to f5. Yeah, very tricky position to play, like for both sides. Yeah, rook g8 was a nice way to defend the pawn through x ray vision, because if takes takes. The rook defends a pawn. It wasn't easy for white to win. Yeah, I think queen d1 was just a blunder. So, yeah, if I go for this, what's the follow-up? Rook h7, queen f3. Yeah, I guess g5. It looked murky, though. So I won the material. And then, yeah, white's play was just easier. I wanted to break in the center, but I was just too slow. Maybe I shouldn't take the knight. Even here, it's fine. The g3 is falling. f5 was just a blunder. Okay. What to do? That's the tournament. Uh, yeah, I, I gained rating. I think I started below 2,700. So I gained like over 25 points. Um, and the plan is to stream the later title Tuesday in about four hours from now. So stay tuned. Thanks everyone for tuning in. I do appreciate the energy. Thanks everyone who resubbed and supported. And I'll be back in a few hours.